Hi, welcome back to the shop. Today we have another small project. Um, this is the shank of a Wohlhopter boring head, small boring head with a Morse Taper 4 shank. And um, this, this is not mine. Uh, somebody in an online forum asked if there is somebody out that could machine this shank down to a diameter of 20 millimeters and um, shorten it so he can chuck it up in an ER32 um, collet and there was a lot of fuzzing around in the um, thread with the discussion about uh, machining the shank down it might be hardened or it might be way too hard to machine or it might explode or whatever and I stepped up to the person and said I will machine it down for him. We're going to cut it off with the um, cutoff disc with the angle grinder. Then we're going to the lathe and we're going to machine or grind with the tool post grinder the shank down to a diameter of 20 millimeters and. Um, Put a nice finish on it so he can clamp it in his uh, collet chuck. So you see it's a pretty simple chop and um, it shouldn't take too much effort. And um, yeah there were a lot of people out there that said this thing might be hardened and in fact it is but it's not super hard. In fact the, the file grabs it pretty good so we might get away with just um, turning maybe we don't have to break out the tool post screen but we will see Okay, I have the shank that we just cut down with the angle grinder chucked up in the lathe and I put some brass shim stock between the jaws and workpiece. Uh, now I adjusted it for run out so it's uh, as true as possible here on the um, end on the on the end with the dovetail and also very very true running on the um, shank side so I set up two dial indicators to check it at the same time while I was shifting around the chuck on the flange and uh, knocking the piece in place with a, a brass uh, drift and as you can see the needles don't move very much First of all, we're going to face off the end very carefully and put a 60 degree sander in there so we can support this piece with the um, life center. I don't want to turn this um, only clamped in the chuck uh, unsupported uh, because of the pretty hard material. It's not really glass hard but it's tough enough to cause problems if it's not chucked up very rigid in the machine. So we're going to support it and for that we need a 60 degree sander. I'm going to start out with one of my uh, shop made braced carbide bits and see how it goes. Also I'm going to drop a rag on the lathe beds because I don't want the hardened chips to 
be on there. Okay, that went very well. We got a pretty decent surface finish. Uh, the interrupted cut chipped my, um, my turning tool, but we will regrind that. That's the beauty of um, the braced carbide with a insert tool. You would have lost one cutting edge of a insert that maybe has only two cutting edges and inserts are five bucks and more so cheap way to turn okay i swung the tool post around and now we're going to put a little 60 degree chamfer or 30 degree depending on which angle you're looking on um, into the bore the central bore of the um, shank and that's for the life center and we're going to use one of the last inserted carbide tools I have, it's this boring bar. Okay, that's enough of a 60 degree count bore for the tip of the life sander to engage the workpiece. Okay, we set it up with the life sander and I'm going to make a witness mark over here with a, in a distance of 45 millimeters. Oh yeah, that stuff makes a horrible mess with stringy chips on uh, low feet. Yeah, I know, don't touch the chips. Okay, that's too dangerous with the stringy chips. Um, I will go back to a tool with a chip breaker so I don't get this curly mess. I'm not going to pull on these by hand. That's an easy way to remove a finger.
Okay, I roughed it down and did a first finishing pass and I'm down to um, 20.5 millimeters. That's 0.5 to go. And we're going to take two passes, um, 25 hundredths of a millimeter each pass. So I get, um, I see if the cut is consistent. Also, this is a tool with a pretty big radius. So I get at the shoulder a nice radius and uh, no stress rise area where the shank might break off. Okay, not the best finish in the world, but it's okay. I think I'm going to run, uh, uh, I'm going to polish it later on, very likely with some uh, super finishing paper or super finishing uh, band. Let's measure this. We have 20.245 on the shoulder end and 20 point 20 point three nine eight what 20 point two three eight at the outer end so it's almost perfectly cylindrical and we're going to take another cut down to 20 and we leave it heavy two hundredths of a millimeter to give us some meat for finishing I think the last step is to break the sharp corners and I don't have a carbide tempering tool so I'm going to use my use the turning tool rotate it around by about approximately 45 degrees Okay, let's check it once and for all. On the shoulder end, we have 19.995, and on the outside end, we have 19.993 millimeters. So, this is pretty much uh, cylindrical and 
way in the tolerance that are needed to hold it in an ER32 collet chuck. So let's take this out of the lathe and go back to the bench. Okay, we're back in the bench and we have the shank of the boring head here. Um, I'm very happy how this came out and as expected the material of the shank was hard. It was not super hard, it was not like a high speed steel or a or another cutting tool, but it was still pretty hard and pretty... It was hard on the carbide tool. It um, The interrupted cut on the facing broke the edge of my um, of my carbide lathe tool which was ground at a very aggressive angle and to a very delicate uh, point so it wasn't too surprising that the corner chipped but anyway I got it done I got it turned down to 20 millimeters it's cylindrical and the surface finish is not too lousy so I think that little project is done and I'll send it back to the owner and hope he's happy with it. Thank you for watching.